Hi students. This video is going to be a quick expansion of the concept of the mole and a couple of practice problems. It's not going to correspond directly to a text that's in your lecture workbook. It is going to be included in a future version of the lecture workbook, but I've found that some students do benefit from having a couple extra practice problems. Just to cement the idea of what a mole is and how to do conversions with Avogadro's number, and how to recognize when you need to use Avogadro's number. A lot of students use Avogadro's number in conversion factors for problems where it's not needed. So I want to do a couple more practice problems that where you do need it before then we get into uh, doing molar mass conversions where it's not necessarily needed. So I'm going to move over to just uh, some scratch paper here. So we know that one mole of something equals an Avogadro's number of those things, right? And it could be a mole of eggs, is that many eggs? It could be a mole of grains of sand, is that, or is that many grains of sand? It could be a mole of people, is that many people? Well, I hope it um, makes intuitive sense that there are not that many people in the world. There are not that many eggs in the world. There, the mole Avogadro's number is such a large number that using it for particles or objects that we can see and touch doesn't really make sense because it's such a large number. So usually the mole is used to describe very, very, very tiny things. So for example, atoms or molecules or possibly uh, subatomic particles like protons or electrons, okay? Or maybe it's a formula unit, that is, a formula unit is uh, just a, a unit of a particular formula, chemical formula. So we do use moles to describe these sorts of things because there are that many things in the world. You can easily have a mole of atoms or a mole of molecules. So let's use this concept and do a couple more conversions. So I'm going to uh, set up a problem here. How many uh, water molecules are in, oh, let's call it 4.1 moles of water? Now right away, I think you can see that we're talking about a number of particles. These particles are specifically molecules. Molecules of what? Molecules of water. So how many of these molecules are in 4.1 moles of H2O? So 4.1 moles of H2O, and then how many molecules? of H2O. And you can see that there's going to be a single conversion factor from moles of those water molecules to molecules. Moles of H2O, and the abbreviation for mole, M-O-L-E, is M-O-L. So it's not much of an abbreviation, is it? But very often you'll see M-O-L as the abbreviation for moles. Be very careful about your abbreviation for moles. The abbreviation for mole is not a lowercase m. That's meters or sometimes mass. It's not a capital M. That is molarity, which means something different. So either write out the word M-O-L-E or use the abbreviation M-O-L. That's the appropriate abbreviation, okay? So moles of H2O goes in the denominator so it can cancel. Molecules of H2O goes up in the top because that's what we're looking for. Now we need to figure out which numbers go where. And we know that a one mole is how many particles, whatever the particles are, eggs, people, stars, grains of sand, molecules, atoms, electrons, formula units. It's an Avogadro's number, right? And so there we go. So 4.1 moles times the Avogadro's number of molecules per mole would give us our number of molecules. Just doing this math real quick. 
4.1 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd equals 2 sig figs, 4 sig figs, multiplication, I need 2 sig figs, so my answer is 2.5 times 10 to the 24th. Now let's circle that, and there's my answer, 2.5 times 10 to the 24th molecules. Does that answer make sense? Well, yes, there would be an Avogadro's number of molecules in one mole, but we have 4.1 moles, so we should have four times that number, which is that number there, right there. Okay, so we can work backward. Similarly, if we are given the number of molecules of something, or particles, whether it's atoms or molecules or electrons or formula units, we can, we can, we can calculate how many moles of that we have. So let's do this other problem here. So I'll call this one a, a problem A just so that we can refer back to it if we want to. And then we'll do another problem B here. And I'm going to write the problem out and then I'm going to ask you to try it out and then uh, see if we can get the same answer. So the question I'm going to write is, I'm not going to give you the number of moles of something, I'm going to give you the number of formula units. So how many moles of sodium chloride, NaCl, are there if we have, let's call it one point seven five times ten to the twenty sixth formula units of NACL. What does formula unit mean again? A formula unit means that you have one unit of that formula. You have a sodium ion and you have a chloride ion, and so you have one unit of that formula. And I'm saying you have 1.75 times 10 to the 26th of those formula units. So how many moles of sodium chloride are there? Well, I'd like for you to pause the video and see if you can work that out, set up your math, make sure you're diligent with your dimensional analysis, and when you've finished and you have your correct number of sig figs and everything, then resume the video and compare your work with mine. Go ahead. Okay, I'm assuming that you're coming back from uh, doing this work, so I'm going to go ahead and set it up. So I'm given a number of formula units of sodium chloride, and I'm asked for how many moles. So so we start with that, what we're given on the left. And where we're going on the right. And now we're, we're starting our dimensional analysis, right? So I'm going to have a conversion factor. Formula units of NaCl and moles of NaCl. So we know that the formula units, the number of formula units will cancel out and give us moles of NaCl, which is what we're looking for. Which numbers go where? Well, one mole is how many formula units? How many of these things are in a mole? It's like an Avogadro's number. And now we have our numbers in the right place, and now it just uh, it relies upon us to be able to plug everything into our calculator correctly. So 1.75 times 10 to the 26th, and it's going to be divided by this number, divided by 6.022 to the 23rd, three sig figs, four sig figs, I need three sig figs. So my answer will be rounded at 291. 291 moles of sodium chloride. Well, how much does that weigh? We haven't gotten there yet. Notice that this is not dealing with the atomic mass of sodium or chloride or the molar mass of sodium chloride yet. And it's going to be important for us to determine when a problem is asking for us to do something that requires the Avogadro's number and when it requires the molar mass of the compound and when it requires both. So we don't, we don't want to be throwing things into the dimensional analysis that are going to lead us down a, down a dead end. We only want to use the conversions that we need. So yes, I could determine how many grams this is. I could take 291 moles times the molar mass of sodium chloride 
and I would get the number of grams. It would be a, it would be a large amount. It would, it would weigh a lot. But this problem did not require me to deal with any of the atomic masses or molar masses. It gave me a number of formula units, and it asked for how many moles that meant. So I only needed to use Avogadro's number in this case. Okay, so I just wanted to go through a couple of practice problems there just to flesh out this idea of being able to use the Avogadro's number in conversion factors to be able to convert from moles to particles, whether the particles are molecules or atoms or formula units or electrons or whatever, and then to be able to go backward, to be able to convert from the number of particles, like the formula unit of the sodium chloride is a particle, to the number of moles of something. Okay? And there we go.